Today, Corsair is launching their brand new high-end gaming monitor, the Xenion 32 UHD 144. And as the name implies, it is a 32-inch IPS monitor with a 4K resolution and 144Hz refresh rate. Plus, it comes with a proper HDMI 2.1 connection and a proper wide color gamut. So on paper, it does seem like an ultimate monitor for gamers, but also for creators, and that perfectly fits Corsair's audience. But there are also several other monitors on the market that offer similar specs and promise the same thing. So let's test this one out to see what makes it stand out and if it's worth considering at all. Let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. So the first thing you'll notice is the size of this monitor. It will look impressive when you first set it up, especially if you're coming from a 27-inch screen, but it is also not too large and it will fit most desks easily. And when you combine that size with a 4K resolution, you get a very sharp image with a DPI that is actually higher than on a 27-inch Quad HD monitor. They are reusing the design from their first monitor, the 32 QHD 165. Uh, the body is thin and elegant and the stand is quite noticeable, I would say. And it will kind of come down to personal taste if you like this kind of a stand or not, but it is extremely well built and it is one of the sturdiest stands I've ever seen on any monitor. It is all metal, the finish is lovely, and it is also ergonomic with a good range of motion. It is height adjustable, you can swivel it, you can tilt it, but you cannot rotate it 90 degrees, which is pretty normal for a monitor of this size. Uh, you can also vase mount it if you want to, but I do feel like the stand is a key part of the whole experience here. There's a nice cable management system on the back with plenty of space for all the cables you might need. And just like before, you can mount some accessories to the top of the stand. Surprisingly enough, Corsair didn't add any RGB to the chassis, and I have to say I don't really miss it at all. Uh, there's a good range of connections in the back. Uh, you get two proper HDMI 2.1 ports, a display port, and a USB Type-C port, as well as a USB hub and a headphone jack. Now the Type-C power delivery is only 15 watts, so unfortunately you cannot really connect and charge your laptop with a single cable. Uh, there are also no speakers built in, which I kind of didn't mind on a QHD monitor, but it would have been nice to have on a monitor that is supposed to be great for console gaming as well. The OSD is controlled with a little joystick on the side, and I really like the design of the OSD. It is very clean, it is very straightforward, it is easy to read, and it responds pretty fast. Plus, you can also control all monitor settings with Corsair's IQ software as well, and if you have a Steam Deck, you can actually use it to quickly switch uh, between profiles, between inputs, or between response time settings, which is pretty cool, and that is not something that you will get with any other monitor brand. But let's see how this monitor performs. Like most high-end 4K gaming monitors, the 32UHD144 does go a bit brighter than average. It hits 452 nits in SDR mode, which puts it a bit above the PG32UQ as well as the M32U, and it goes way brighter than the EX3210U. It is a good result and it makes it very nice to use in bright environments. It doesn't dim as much as others though, uh, showing a minimum white level of 94 nits. Now, the color gamut is very good. Uh, Corsair is claiming this is a 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB panel, and the results do confirm that. Uh, it doesn't cover the entire P3 gamut, if that is important to you, but if you work in Adobe RGB, this is one of the few gaming monitors that can do that very well. The total range of colors this panel can show is really excellent. It performs much better than the cheaper M32U. It is up there with the PG32UQ and it is only beaten by the much more expensive PA32UCX. 
Now, while a good range of colors is important for creative work, it is also nice for gaming as you simply have an option to make the colors pop more than on a typical monitor, uh, something that Corsair's default profile is doing very well. But they're also including a lot of other presets if you don't want that, including one for each of the most common color spaces. So you get an Adobe RGB, DCI-P3 and sRGB one. And these three profiles are calibrated pretty well, although all of them have a couple of colors that are a little bit further off than they should be. But honestly, all of these results are pretty much fine for anyone that is doing some casual or some uh, semi-pro photo or video work. And if you need a totally perfectly calibrated screen, you will have to calibrate it manually. Since this is an IPS panel, the viewing angles are excellent and there is no noticeable backlight bleed, but the uniformity, however, is kinda mediocre. Now, that is pretty common with fast 4K panels and it's not something that you will really notice in actual use, but it definitely could be better. Now, contrast isn't amazing, uh, standing at 990 to 1, but this is an IPS panel, so that was expected. And when you combine that with a lack of a proper local dimming, it uh, means that the HDR experience on this monitor just isn't as impressive as on a OLED monitor, for example. It is an HDR 600 certified monitor, so it's not completely bad, and it will be better than your typical budget mid-range gaming monitor, but it is still far from amazing. In the HDR mode, it gets a little bit brighter than in the SDR mode, uh, hitting 586 nits, which is just a little bit less than on the PG32UQ, but more than on the EX3210U and the M32U. Now, the brightness and the color tracking in HDR mode is done well, and in my opinion, it is definitely worth experimenting with, so you might enjoy some games a bit more if you turn the HDR on instead of leaving it off. But let's move on to what matters the most when it comes to gaming monitors, the speed. Now, starting with the average latency, the 32 UHD 144 came in about 3 milliseconds behind the 360 Hz PG259 QNR, which is actually a great result. And that puts it right beside the PG32 UQ, EX3210U, and the Gigabyte M32U. And it is significantly quicker than the PG32 UQ X, as well as the LG G1 OLED in game mode. The pixel response times kind of depend on the overdrive setting that you choose, and Corsair gives quite a few settings to choose from. By default, it is in dynamic mode, and they're also normal, fast, faster, and the fastest mode. Now, in most monitors, the fastest overdrive setting uh, exists only to reach those one millisecond marketing claims, and they usually have an extreme overshoot that makes them just unusable. But Corsair, however, didn't do that, because even in the fastest setting, there isn't much overshoot at all. Now, it doesn't really hit that one millisecond marketing claim, uh, because the fastest transition is 2.2 milliseconds, and the average initial response time is just under six milliseconds, but I still think that's a very respectable result from a high resolution monitor like this one, and it is in line with most of its competitors. Now, personally, I do like the setting that is called faster the most. It seems a bit more consistent, especially going from light to dark tones, uh, with a similar initial response time, and again, with no significant overshoot to speak of. Now, this seems like the most balanced setting, in my opinion, and that is the one that I would choose. Both fast and normal settings do remove overshoot completely, but they are actually much slower, and the normal profile especially leads to a very noticeable ghosting. So I would definitely avoid those two settings completely. Now, I guess in theory, dynamic is supposed to swap between the best setting depending on the situation, uh, but in my testing, it just seemed kind of worse. Uh, maybe that's just something that Corsair still needs to adjust a little bit. But overall, uh, while some of the things need a bit of improvement and aren't that perfect, like HDR for example, uh, this is still a very solid monitor that competes very well with other options on the market, which is actually a really big compliment for a brand that is only just launching their second monitor ever. It has an excellent wide color gamut panel, it is pretty fast, it is calibrated pretty well, it is very well built, it has a straightforward OSD, uh, you get a ton of connections, uh, including proper HDMI 2.1 ports, and it integrates well with your other Corsair and Elgato hardware, which is pretty unique. 
but like all fast 4K gaming monitors, it is not cheap. So you will have to set aside around $1,000 without taxes in the US or about 1,100 euros including taxes here in the EU, which is a lot of money. But the PG32UQ from ASUS costs pretty much the same and they are very similar in many ways. The EX3210U costs the same, but the Corsair is actually consistently better in benchmarks. And the M32U from Gigabyte is significantly cheaper and while it offers great gaming experience, the Corsair is actually built better, offers a wider color gamut, higher brightness and slightly better HDR. So you kind of have to decide for yourself uh, between paying less or getting a bit of extras. Now, of course, there are many more options out there depending on what you're after. Uh, you can go for a good QD OLED ultra wides or large OLED TVs for that perfect contrast and immersion gaming. Or you can go for faster, smaller panels that offer proper competitive experience. But keep in mind, they all have their ups and downs that you need to consider. And if you do decide to go for a fast 4K monitor like this one, because they are basically really great for everything. Uh, they're great for gaming, they're great for creating content, and also for that regular everyday use, uh, this 32 UHD 144 is definitely worth considering. Now that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to this channel to never miss an upload. Bye guys and see you in the next one.